Welcome to our third Zoom exhibition and our first episode of Art on the Rocks, an exhibition walkthrough with spirits. I'm Rhonda Brown, and my husband Tom Grata and I have promoted art as Brown Grata Arts for several years. We've chosen a fast moving format for Art on the Rocks. We'll present 25 images or so from our recent exhibition and speak about each no longer than one minute. We hope this will provide a dynamic way to explore Brown Grata Arts exhibitions and artists online. We've added spirits in our curated cocktail recipe, carefully prepared to extend the aesthetic experience. In this episode of Art on the Rocks, we'll talk through some of the works and themes in Crowdsourcing the Collective, a survey of textile and mixed media art, our spring 2022 exhibition. Our curated cocktail is hibiscus lemonade with tequila, created in honor of crowdsourcing. The exhibition features 42 artists from 13 countries. If you want to see even more, there is a catalog you can order from our website. And we've posted images of all the artworks in crowdsourcing on Artsy. And now to our curated cocktail. Hibiscus Lemonade with Tequila is the creation of our talented in-house mixologist, Max Van Wyck. You can learn more about Max's libations and culinary creations at, at Dude Who Cooks. For one serving, you'll need one part tequila, one part lemonade, one part sparkling water, one quarter part extra strong hibiscus tea. Pour over ice and stir. Zoom, but don't drive. Now to our talk through. Crowdsourcing the collective was a bit of a departure for us. Generally, we determine a theme and ask artists to provide us work in response. We've asked them to look at color in blue-green, what spurs their inspiration in stimulus, and the effect of place in art and identity. For this exhibition, however, we asked artists what they wanted to exhibit, something they were working on currently, perhaps, or an earlier work that they wanted to give more attention. Based just on when the works were made, the responses we received were quite varied. We included works by Naomi Kobayashi that were made 40 years ago and works that were completed just days before we opened. In this image, a figurative sculpture from an ongoing series by Stephanie Jacques, a 2022 work by Wendy Wall made of World Book Encyclopedia pages, and a new work of stainless steel mesh by Jin Suk So join a dramatic tapestry by, by Wildmarried Saigon. From 2000, it's entitled Now. And like crowdsourcing, it illustrates the point where the past and future connect. The works show wide diversity, not just in the times they were made, but also in the materials and techniques employed. From a subject matter perspective, however, there were some common themes we observed. A search for solace and hope, continuing concern for the environment, reflections on the process of making textiles, use of different materials, and an effort to make connection. Coming out of the pandemic and facing a world in flux, Eduardo Portillo and Maria de Vila in Venezuela were among those who referenced art as a way to reframe events. Above all, they wrote us, we have been very aware of the fragility of life and continue looking to preserve our pequeños espacios under these turbulent times. They have been at work on an imagined cosmos, a framework where they pursue ideas and quests, like the experiments in Maya Blue and Copper Patina explored in Oceano Cosmico shown here. As she created Balance, a very recent work, Rachel Max of the UK realized it was a subconscious reflection on the world we're in now. Everything seems to be in the balance, she says, her aim was to distort the form, but still create something that was both 
finite and infinite. It's rare that the title of a piece comes to me during the making process, she says. But as I was weaving this, I became aware of its changing weight and stability, forcing me to rethink how I originally intended it to be seen. Pat Campbell's work, Peace, provides a timely statement about current international turmoil. Campbell's works are all meditation pieces designed to convey concepts of peace and contemplation. She works in modules that are usually bilaterally symmetrical, often geometric. In sending peace to crowdsourcing, she was mindful of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. We are all horrified that this could happen in 2022 and feel sadness for the Ukrainians, she wrote. Her work, she says, is a prayer for peace. Carolina Razaval of Venezuela says she embarked on an intentional search for hope in difficult times. She sought out new colors in her dye work, which she uses in Shibori. Over and over again, she dyed and transformed one color into another until one day, she says, she found herself amongst hope in green. Trees and forests, she says, uneven and spirited nature. The green in nature captured Leah Cook's interest as well. Her California garden continues to be an endless source of inspiration. These jacquard weavings of ferns focus on plant fibers combined with reimagined work she created in the 70s, and inspiration from optical, neurological, and natural fiber connections. A strong tactile experience is always central and essential for Cook. Lija Rage, Marion Camp, and Jin Suk So found inspiration from the seashore. Lija Rage's home reflects the colors of the fishing village in Latvia where she's from with salt wooden houses and boats painted in the sun and the salty sea, their special gray. Marion Kemp's work, Ripples, reflects textures found at the seashore in the Netherlands after a storm. Upright ribbing in sand and a great sky above, water flowing back into the sea, making soft tracks flowing in little streams. In Jin Suk So's untitled Blue Gold, she folded stainless steel mesh, then painted the shape with the colors of the blue sky and the sun shining through the sea, which gives off a gold. There are various kinds of gold involved, creating a beautiful harmony in the work. So likes to use gold, she says, as it makes precious and noble expressions impossible. Yasuhiso Koyama channels nature in his works, which combine clay, water, wood, fire, and weather in elemental ways. This work, Slice of Earth, or nicknamed Canyon, followed a trip Koyama took to the American West. His work, he wants to reflect his gratitude and reverence for the life given to him by nature and for what has been handed down to him by his predecessors. Environmental threats and changes remain top of mind for several artists. Louis Noss was influenced by the American West too, he spent the summer in Santa Fe, New Mexico. There was a haze most of the summer from the fires in California. The fires became an obsession, he said, and these works were the result. Laura Foster Nicholson is known for pastoral and whimsical images of vegetables and bees and farms. In recent work, however, she's turned to climate concerns, exploring floods in Venice and here the delivery of goods and the environmental consequences of our overconsumption. She is visually inspired first by the color in the container ships like the one featured in CMA CGM, by the vortex patterns in the plastic discard that floats in the ocean, and by reflections in the water across which goods move. An extreme weather event in Iowa inspired Mary Merkel Hess's work after the rich go. The term refers to a straight line windstorm that reaches 100 miles an hour Tornado-like in power, but no twisting. In the artist's case, the storm came through and destroyed a good part of the tree canopy. The most vivid memory I have of the day, she wrote, was seeing the tops of trees coming down in a matter of minutes. Leaves that were 50 feet in the air, now pressed tightly against the windows, making it dark inside. Such a strange image, as if the earth was turned upside down. For other artists in the exhibition, the nature of textiles and the textile process was a main focus. As Carolyn Bartlett explains, thread and fabric is a potent medium of social, political, ecologic, and symbolic significance. 
reflecting the fragility and connectivity of the world we inhabit. From the private to the public, textiles embrace so much. Bartlett has been reflecting on the ecology of art practice as it shifts between continuity and change. This modular piece, Every End is a New Beginning, is open to reconfiguration, suggesting the need for interaction and adaptability. Polly Barton also thinks about the process. What is engaging and informing my thoughts in the studio, she wrote us, is the idea of cross fertilization of the senses as expressed in fiber. For instance, the sound a certain thread makes when touched. In this work, Serene Countenance, she used monofilament and metallic thread to achieve a shimmery surface that changes as the light does. Shoko Fukuda of Japan, who is new to Brown Grotta Arts, is interested in engineering of sorts. In making loop with corners, she addressed the challenge of creating a multifaceted, three-dimensional object from a flat surface. By weaving the surfaces and fastening them together to form corners, unexpected twisting and turning occurred. The core is an elastic material. Threads are used to hold back the force of the core as it bounces outwards. The repulsive force of the material influences the act of weaving, leading to the eloquent undulating form. Above and Below by Hydran Schimmel is about material as matter. What happens, she asked, if the background of my stitchery, the transparent silk fabric, is partially destroyed in the making? The work she discovered results in a form that cannot be projected in advance. Making was also at the forefront in Sue Lottie's Notes on Blue. She commissioned linen and hemp threads to be hand dyed with indigo by an artist in Wales. I purposely requested a range of unevenly dyed shades across the tonal spectrum, and then commenced to work intuitively, reading the weaving line by line as it progressed. In Italy, Blair Tate became interested in visual layering, frescoes interrupted by superimposed paintings and incised niches, older fenestration patterns, and newer window additions in perpetual conflict. In repair, she played with these concepts, rearranging separately woven strips utilizing woven casings and a uniform grid of weft cords to create windows on the wall. The whole is intentionally splintered, fragmented, unsettled. A reflection of our time, she says, perhaps all times. Whether drawing or crocheting with fiber, Norma Minkowitz describes herself as mesmerized with the possibilities of line. Fallen Angel is a variation on the Icarus story of flying too close to the sun, an angel falling from above. The rhythm of her very intricate and delicate crocheted stitches convey the sense of movement and add to the dynamic flow of the angel's descent. The wide variety of unusual materials used by the artists in crowdsourcing, including cabiso silk, hog gut, coconut fiber, cedar and hibiscus bark, walnut and agave, struck us as another thread one could follow through the exhibition. Here is a new sculpture by Hisako Sekijima that incorporates hibiscus bark. We played on this theme and highlighted the art materials that were also edible in the refreshments we served visitors to the in-person version of crowdsourcing. Our curated cocktail hibiscus lemonade with tequila highlighted hibiscus and agave. The latter is used in tequila making and in things past for which James Bassler used a single ply agave spun by beginners. I started in April weaving with a needle finished in October. In the simplicity of both the material and the process, it reflects another time, another world, he says. Bassler's friend, the artist Trin Elitzgard, has worked with artisans in Oaxaca, Mexico, to create fibers and spun thread from agave waste to spin into rugs and bags and art. 1818 Tequila, which we served at crowdsourcing, partners with a nonprofit called Sacred to create adobe bricks from leftover agave fibers and liquids generated in tequila production to help improve lives in the rural communities where heritage agave spirits are made. Polly Sutton exhibited baskets of cedar and ash in crowdsourcing. A major cedar work by Sutton is featured in this present moment, Crafting a Better World, the 50th anniversary exhibition at the Renwood Gallery of the Smithsonian in Washington, DC, there until February of 2023. 
Also new for crowdsourcing were baskets made of seaweed by Jeanette Linderski, originally from the Netherlands and now the US. She began foraging seaweed, in particular rockweed, to work with and discovered the amazing benefits this natural resource provides. Seaweed not only creates a habitat for countless species, she says, it sequesters carbon and protects the shoreline from erosion. My work grows from coastal impressions and material exp experimentation. Her rockweed vessels draw attention to these underwater forests. I feel a strong responsibility to consider my materials and what my creative process will leave behind. A final concern evident in some of the works was a literal search for connection. Stephanie Jacques, for example, has been at work on a series of figures between 2015 and 2022 that convey varied human emotions and experiences. For a long time, she worked to create human figures that stood up. Strangely, she says, when she gave up the idea of verticality, it became possible for them to stand. The upper body of these sculptures are geometric forms evoking the crossing of certain experiences. Touch has always been an important element of my work, says Carol Sisson. I've pivoted between two and three dimensional art since the 80s. But by 2021, the wall art wasn't as satisfying to me. Returning to sculptural forms like these shapeshifters gave her the haptic experience that addressed her personal needs. These abstract figures, last one standing and connecting by Dawn McNutt, are the last works remaining from her Kindred Spirits series started in the 90s. It was a summer labor of love, she says, to invisibly sew with copper wire, the woven seagrass and copper wire profile to a welded steel infrastructure in order to send them to crowdsourcing. They have been described as two figures embracing in an attempt to communicate while in isolation, an appropriate metaphor for much of art making. We end our whirlwind presentation with an image of Ginge Lockie's Thinking Clearly and Unbound by Norma Minkowitz. Thank you for joining our first Art on the Rocks. For more information, look for the crowdsourcing catalog on our website and see the pieces in the exhibition online on Artsy. Thanks again to Max at Dude Who Cooks and to our team at Juice Creative, Wilson Beltran, Mary Luke, Mike Kelleher, Amanda Schrouder, and Peter Fisher. Thank you for tuning in and join us again in October. Cheers.